Ever since Colin Chapman first introduced the Formula One world to front wings in 1968, they have only grown more and more and more and more and more complex. But not only that, throughout the decades they've also become much, much lower towards the ground. Which is why when the 2022 Aston Martin car headed out onto the track at Silverstone for the team's filming day, it raised some fans' eyebrows. Because this new era of car seems to have a strange reversal of decades of development. And since this is something that it seems a lot of fans aren't aware of, or simply aren't sure why it's happening, I'm here today to give you a breakdown in this episode of The Showroom. Formula One has been slowly heading into a dangerous area where the front wings were simply becoming so complex and interacted so well with the rest of the car's aero package that under the old regulations meant that the racing product has been pretty meh in recent years. The new 2022 aero regulations have been designed with the sole purpose of reducing that pesky dirty air that reduces the downforce of the cars behind, which in turn is slowing them down through the corners, which then means that they are unable to get close enough down straight, or sometimes even remain in DRS range of the car in front. This is why, as a general example, trust me, there have been a lot in the last few years. Hamilton was unable to pass Verstappen at the US Grand Prix this year, despite having fresher tyres and a more powerful engine. Now, at some tracks, this is much clearer than others. For example, throughout the turbo hybrid era, we have seen a lot more overtakes per race at Bahrain than, let's say, Barcelona, despite them both having long straights down towards turn one. The issue is through a mixture of dirty air and the Constantina effect, causing the gaps to increase that some tracks are just simply hindered by more than others. So, realising a long time ago that this was a big problem, Formula One's governing body, the FIA, decided to go down a very different route with what was then going to be the 2021 regulations, but due to the, <coughs> the cough cough, these regulations were pushed back by a year. To figure out why these new front wings on the 2022 cars are so much higher than in the previous iterations of car, we must first understand what the FIA are actually trying to achieve with these new regulations, and also how they're trying to make it happen. So the new aero regulations have been designed with three objectives in mind. The first being to reduce the overall dirty air coming off of the cars. The second was to reduce how much the cars are actually affected by this dirty air in the first place. And the third was to simplify the team's aero packages as a whole. For all of these to be achieved, there had to be a radical rehaul of the aero regulations. And for the first time in the sports history, the FIA had more engineering and processing power at their disposal than the teams did. Through deals with AWS, you know, those graphics that pop up during the race and annoy everyone, and also always get everything wrong, but that's beside the point. The FIA had access to, well, effectively supercomputers that the teams just simply don't have access to. They were able to run simulations of two cars following each other, simulating millions of elements, and what would normally take days to simulate could now be completed in a matter of hours. So through many different philosophies and iterations, the FIA believe that they have found the best solution to solve those three key goals. For 2022, the power of downforce generation is moving away from the wings and towards the floor. This now means that the underside of the cars are going to be much more vital than in previous years, and also much more protected by the teams. This change has already resulted in teams releasing simplified versions of their floors in car launches, or in McLaren's case, removing the floor altogether. So that leads us to answering the question of this video. Why is the front wing so high? Well, 
Given what I've already said, the answer is actually pretty simple. The floor now has a much higher proportion of downforce generation compared to the front wing. So that means the teams are wanting as much undisturbed air as possible to flow beneath the car, thus increasing the downforce and effectiveness of their overall aero package. This means that the minor benefit of running the front wing as low as possible to the ground is outweighed by the major benefit of having clean, relatively undisturbed air running through the floor and tunnels that sit behind it. This ultimately means that by running the front wing at a higher level, its performance may be decreasing in its simplified form, but the overall performance of the car is able to improve. Well, hopefully this has cleared that one up for you. Don't forget that pre-season testing, sorry, session, is just around the corner, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel for a live stream of pre-season testing and the rest of our live car reveal watch-alongs as we see in this new era of Formula 1. But, as ever, until next time, goodbye. <laughs>